Happy New Year. Hope you've had a good Christmas and you're looking forward to 2024. Let's get into it. What we have here is a 63 Buick Riviera, one of the great designs of General Motors in the 60s. This is an AMT screw bottom that I recently picked up off the old flea bay. Uh, I have the 65 Riviera round two re-release, the George Barris 65, but I really am kind of partial to the 63s and 4s. Let me tell you why. 65s had the headlights in here instead of in the grill. They had a kind of a kind of a clamshell opening, if you will, and they were stacked here. The 63s and 4s have the headlights here. The 63s and 4s have these cool little scoops. And also the rear treatment is just a little bit different and a little bit nicer, if you ask me. So I do prefer a 63 or 4. So I was kind of keeping my eye out for a 63 or 4 on eBay to do a 63 or 4 with my 65 kit. And this thing popped up. They're usually very expensive. This one was not that expensive, so I was pretty excited for it. She's bone stock, and we're going to transform this thing in a matter of minutes here. But first, I wanted to just kind of show it to you. Even though this is a very old kit, I think it was built not as long ago as we think because this color, I, I painted a few cars with this color back when I was a kid. I think this is the Tester's Shizum Teal Pearl. And the Shizum was a 57 Chevy, highly modified, built by Boyd Coddington. And it was built in the late 80s or 90s. And then these colors came out in the 90s. And so while the 90s was a long time ago, uh, this car uh, was not built in the 60s. But I think it is a 60s release due to the screw bottom, due to the fact that it is a 63. Where's the 63? It's a 63. Um, so I think it's an original AMT 63 kit, but it was built later, and the the, um, the color tells the tale. I, I do believe this is Shizum Teal Pearl, came out in the 90s. But look, it's been flocked. The underside of the hood has been flocked. Nailhead Buick with a little loose nailhead Buick, broken motor mounts, with uh, Hillborn injection, and the dash and the package tray have been flocked as well. And nicely painted in tier. So what I thought I'd do is just have some fun with this real quick. And we're going to change the wheels and the tires and the stance in just a few minutes and totally change the look of this rib. Now I'm going to build this rib up one day. But for the meantime, we can change it and really make it look killer really, really fast. So let's get started on this thing. All right, those were a little finicky. I haven't been out in very, very many years. Jump out of there. Make sure I don't lose the screws. The interior tub out. They work that really quick. Ooh, that's cool. I wonder if I could build this and use this interior tub again as a nod to the previous builder. Colors are a little weird though. Tan and two tone blue while they go together. What color could I paint the outside that would match all this? I don't know. Hmm, I'll have to think on that. Very cool though. Very cool. There's three, there's four. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the chassis. She is in the stock height position. She was sitting pretty proud, but there are lowering holes on these old screw bombs, so. Screw bombs, not screw bombs, screw bottoms. Yes, so let's, uh, we're going to adjust the height and we're going to adjust the wheel and tire selection. Now, I'm a firm believer that any vehicle can look a lot better. I don't care what it is. If you can adjust the height and put some wheels and tires on it, any vehicle can look good. I've seen it done lots of times. I've done it myself with a few vehicles, uh, 1 1 vehicles. We're going to use these. Pegasus Hobbies Astro Supremes. They don't call them Astros, but those are clearly Astro Supremes. I really wish they would make some without so much offset. A little bit narrower for me. I know this is cool for the lowrider guys, but 
Man, I wish they were a little bit narrow, but it'll work for what we're doing. All right, so we need to peel these, these wheels off, stalkers off here. Oh, tight. Oh, not bad. But I still need to get this side off, which might require some pliers. All right, there's a lowering hole there, a lowering hole there. And then earlier I took the liberty to save some time by drilling a third hole. There's the stock lowered and the Hay Auto Special, the third hole, to lower those a little bit because I thought I might need to do that. So I went ahead and did that earlier. So we're going to get those axles off those old wheel backs and we're going to slam this thing together. Right, let's see if we can get these wheel backs free of these. Oh, that one's not moving. That one's not moving. Is that right? This one. By the way, this is not easy working with a camera between me and what I'm doing. Oh, all right. The axles have been liberated from the old wheel backs. Now, we just need to put these on here. Hey. Not super snug. They're a little bit... They're a little bit loosey-goosey. Okay, we might need to put a little super glue ski in there. All right, I do plan on using these. This isn't just for mock-up purposes, so... I use the gel, by the way. It stays where it needs to be. I don't know if y'all use gel. But uh, I use the gel because it, I'm sorry, I, I shake a little bit, so I'm not going to make you seasick. I'm going to super glue those bad boys in there because I do plan on using these wheels. That one. Okay. Now, just because I'm going to be taking this thing apart a bunch, I will not super glue the other side. I'll just keep those on there so it, can, it won't fall apart so easily. All right, let's get about lowering these, this thing the easiest way you can lower a vehicle. Oh, man, I love these screw bottoms. Oh, love them. Boom. Do the other side. There we go. It's going to be a little loosey-goosey. It's not going to stay on very good, but we're good enough for our purposes. Ooh, yeah, that's good. That's good right there. Let's see if the extra hole I drilled was too low. Can a car ever really be too low? I submit it cannot. All right, that wants to fall off. I'm glad I glued one side. Wants to fall off. Two. Right. There we go. Ooh, that's gonna look good. All right, let's get this thing back together. All right, let's put it back in. Can we just slam this on here like this without the screws? Are we gonna get lucky today? All right, here we go. Now for the big reveal. Dun, 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 without the screws in it, will it stay together? Holy moly. Now that's what I'm talking about. Man, what a difference. I think I'm glad I did drill that extra hole. Whoa. Okay, we got some offset issues. That's all right. Man, that thing looks good. Ooh, proper stance. Yeah, I like that. Okay. So, we have slammed the screw bottom rivy in a matter of minutes. 
you guys like it. All right, also wanted to do a quick USAC build update. This will be the last update before the final. There's the chrome firewall I painted with the Vell paint. And that's it. That's all you guys get to see because the car, the truck, excuse me, the truck is practically done. Uh, some re other Ravel chrome paint things. I've got a, re um, a monogram 11257 Chevy, and these are 3D printed wires. And I tried out the Ravel chrome paint, and they look pretty good. A little bit tall on the center part there. They kind of look like swangers. If you know, you know what swangers are. Not a fan of swangers, but they are a nice wire rail. Might use those on the 11257 Chevy. Also, in other news that does include Ravel Chrome Paint, I found these Torque Thrust Americans on eBay, 1 12th scale for my Corvette. Now, if you follow the channel, um, I had a video about this Corvette that none of you saw. You could tell by the views. And I didn't know what to do with it. It had stock wheels on it. And I was going to do a factory stock uh, build, but the paint kept giving me problems. It was a silver paint, and I got tired of it one day, and I'm like, I'm going to do this thing custom. So I did a two-tone color on it with some funky stripes. I got rid of the stripes, but I did the six tail lights, and I finally broke down and found some 112 scale torque thrusts on eBay that were resin that fit this thing. And these are the slicks from the kit that I did the white letter outline. But those are also Ravel chrome sprayed, and they look really good. This stuff is amazing, as I'm sure you know. So there's an update on the big 11257, or excuse me, 67 Corvette. Um, that's going to be getting done soon because I've got the wheels and tires situated on that. That is both, that's a two tone blue from the Testers Extreme Enamel. Um, I don't remember the name. I think it's Icy Blue, is the, is the medium blue. I don't remember the name of the dark blue. That thing's coming along. Last thing we'll show you is another Corvette, a 1953 Corvette to be exact. The Monogram 124 scale 53 Corvette. This, I mentioned this in a previous video that I was going to build this for the Naked Group build hosted by Sodak Model Cars. Well, I didn't do that. Um, I painted it mostly. It's This is plastic. I polished the plastic, but I painted everywhere else. So I need to find something else to do for the Naked Group build. I don't know what got over me. I just was like, I got to paint this thing. But I did enjoy polishing the plastic, and it shines really nicely. So this is the Monogram 53 Corvette. Came out really nice. This kind of broke some records for me. First box stock and first factory stock build I've done in ages. But I enjoyed, it was a nice holiday build. You know, just a, some flat black and some gloss black on the bottom, nothing special. I did flock the interior. I don't know if y'all can see that. But I did flock the interior, a little bare metal foil. But that is polished plastic. And it had mold lines in it too. It had all kinds of mold release lines that I sanded out and polished and had fun doing it. I'd never polished plastic before. But I don't know if you can see the sheen. It looks painted. It looks really nice. And so, yeah, there it is. Oh, I do need to paint the taillights and the turn signals yet. So it's 99.9% .9 finished. Uh, let me try to open the hood on this thing. It's like impossible to open. A couple drawbacks to this kit are the fact that it's like impossible to open the hood. You need this to do it because it's it's stuck on the front you have to kind of do a lift and pull type of thing very nice kit overall um one small complaint there are no radiator hoses to be found but that is a nice little 53 chevy six cylinder when the corvette came out they hadn't developed the small block chevy yet or a zora arcus duntoff the father of the Corvette and the small block Chevy hadn't gotten there yet. That didn't come along until 55. So they souped up the 235 inline six and put a power glide behind it. So while the 53 Corvette 
was stunning to look at and probably caused people to drive off the road. She was a little gutless as far as performance goes. And so I would imagine a 55 was amazing because the 55 had a brand new 265 V8 in it. And I think you could get that thing with a, a manual transmission too. But sorry, Adam, didn't make it for the, um, the naked group build, bud. But uh, I'm going to try to still get in before the deadline with something else. I just, uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't do that with this kit. It was just too nice. Now that sounds crazy, but it's semi-nude. It has no paint on the body. Okay, PG-13, perhaps? I don't know what you want to call it. Anyways, guys, Happy New Year. Thanks for coming by. All the support. Take care.